fix an up eyed size 10 mayfly hook in the vise and after testing run a brown thread base a third of the way along. This pattern is called the crone fly or daddy long legs and the body material is plastazote, a buoyant material. I have pre-cut the body which is plastazote and uh, I've shaped it with a pair of scissors and coloured it with a cinnamon Pantone marker, a waterproof pen and I've also threaded a needle with some uh, light brown thread. Now to form the segmented body effect take the needle and form a loop pushing the plastazote body through as you do so. Take the thread along the side of the body pushing the needle through the thread as we go, pulling tight to form these segments. You'll need to form about three segments. And then do a simple overhand knot. Pulling tight again. Do two of these. Pulling tight again. Trim the thread and add a spot of varnish to the thread or the knot. This will help so that the thread doesn't come undone during fishing. The body is then offered up to the hook shank. Tie the detached body in with the small tapered end and trap this down with the thread. Then run the thread along the shank and, and attach in the first segment. Take the thread along the shank again and back towards the eye. The legs are tied from cock pheasant center tail fibers I've already tied six, and I'll now show you how to tie two more. All they are basically are a fibre with two knots at either end to form the knees, knee joints. Simply take it over like so in an overhand, pull tight. Do the same at the other end. Try and get the knots even so that they look the same throughout the imitation. And it's quite simple once you get the hang of it. Just tie simple overhand knots. The legs should then be offered up to the hook, which should be turned over in the vise. The legs are tied in four on either side of the hook shank. And they're tied in in a downward fashion, swept behind, trailing, as though it has, the fly has fallen onto the water and drowned. Tie in two at a time because it's a, you'll find it's a lot easier. Again, a, a crane fly only really has six legs, but we tie in eight in case a fish gets hold of it and we'll lose a few legs. Tie these in fairly tightly. And again, remembering that they must sort of come downwards. Wind the butts down and trim off.
wind over the butts, take the, the thread back to the eye and turn the hook over in the vise. The wing should now be tied in and these are tied in spent fashion. They're two wings tied together, shiny sides facing each other and they should be as long as the body and no longer. They're tied in with the pinch and loop method on top of the shank and you should actually separate these with tying thread tie the stalks down tightly and trim off the excess Make sure the wings lie in an even plane to each other as they are spent wings. The hackle, which is from a ging ginger cock, I've stripped the fibres away and I'll tie that in just near the body and bind that hackle stalk down there. Trim off that hackle stalk the butt end, wind over there and now grip the hackle pliers around the hackle and wind towards the eye. You may need to tie a second hackle in as to tie it in front and behind the wings. Strip the fibres again from a second hackle. Tie the stalk in. Trim it. Tying down the stalk as you go. Now wind this, wind this hackle in, covering over the silk which has been left underneath, silk or thread, depending on what you use. When you've done this, Tie the hackle in at the eye and snip the tip of the hackle off. Again, use the small hackle guard as used with the dry fly. Draw those fibres back and form a neat tapered head. Keep it as small as possible and whip finish. A spot of varnish on the head is the last thing you're going to need to do. Again, remembering that not to block that eye. And there you have the floating daddy long legs. <laughs>